Only that we're more better armed and armored than the Indians that we have the upper hand here. There is an ordinance of King James prohibiting trade of muskets or strong waters to the Indians. This man Morton is a lawyer, a barrister, a pettifogger of uh, Furnival's Inn. If he doth wish to argue English law, quit this place, and vex us no longer, go back to the Inns of Court. But he says this ordinance died with King James a year and a half ago. Now, uh, I would wish to put pay, pay to this man straight away. Uh, Governor Bradford, though, at present, would stay my hand, for he is not uh, appointed by our King Charles to the position of governor, but rather is elected by the freemen of the town here. My neighbors in Plymouth are not, uh, uh, not even citizens voting freemen of towns back home, let alone thinking themselves mayor, or magistrate, or governor. Now, Master Bradford is not certain his jurisdiction extends as far as that place. Now, if you look to scripture, not in the practicality of arming the Indians, but also the matter of the uh, story of Sodom and Gomorrah. As God might save a whole town for the virtues of a few, so he might smite down a whole town for the sins of a few. He'd be your brother, his keeper. We cannot allow this man Morton to carry on with the sins of drunkenness and fornication, or we may see the wrath of God down upon our own heads for mm -hmm. But did you yourself any of, have any objection to his trade with the Indians in guns? Because uh, we don't really know that there were any incidents of the Indians causing harm with the guns they got from him. We are most fortunate that we do have peace with the Indians about us, people of Poconoke, their King Master Soet. But it is such that uh, many Englishmen have lost their lives to the savages in the southern parts of Virginia. And uh, we do also fear war with the French. But we've had uh, threats of war upon us from the Narragansett, some 60 miles to our south and west, as well as with the uh, Massachusetts. Indeed, those men that went north settled at West Gusset on the south side of the bay, near on to this uh, Mount Wallace, mm -hmm. uh, Merry Mount, if you wish to call it that. Um, how, how did... Well, I mean, Morton had a somewhat less antagonistic relationship with the Indians. He didn't build a stockade around Plymouth. He referred to the Plymouth stockade and uh, guardhouse as needless. Um, wh what was the difference in his relations and your own that, that defined that? It's such that, uh, though I'm a soldier, I do not take great delight in killing. Though with the ambitions of nations, war is a thing what is necessary. And it is a prudent man that looks to his own defense. It is best that you have a defense prepared and uh, hope never to use it than to uh, be set upon and have no defense at all. So we are prudent men. And I will say, even some of my neighbors think our fortifications are vain glory rather than a thing of necessity. If that is what I am elected each year to do, to attend upon the defense of the plantation. But, writes historian Richard Drennan, say that Morton had traded firearms to the Indians for furs. So what? Why prohibit one set of human beings something permitted another? The saints affirmed they wished to live in harmony with the Indians and bring them Christian light. What then was more logical than for them also to share their technology with red friends, who could thereby more efficiently share their wilderness? Alas, the logic was not that of sharing. The planters were colonizers. They were the cutting edge of a colonial empire that was currently subjugating Ireland and moving to apply that experience to North America. To arm those about to be conquered struck them as illogical to the point of madness, Drennan writes. The Puritans knew that were the Indians despoiled of their lands and subjected to foreign discipline, they would use the guns in their hands. But, as Professor Drennan writes in Facing West, the metaphysics of Indian hating and empire building, of course the planters and their kinsmen preferred to put the matter the other way around. Not their expansion, but their very existence was threatened. When we asked Martha Reardon and John Langstaff, two experts on rebels, about this affair, they helped us to understand Plymouth's point of view. One, one thing, don't forget, that the Pilgrims had to do was to pay back those who had invested in their venture, the merchant adventurers. So they, they couldn't just live off the land and pick berries and nuts and so forth, but they had to produce pelts and send them back and help to pay off mm -hmm. this debt. And then after that, they went off and established their own small settlements. So, so their one. code of behavior then was a, was a way for them to, uh, well, control their workforce then, to, to pay off that debt? Or, or well, why was that's that so what necessary? My that's what my assumption is. I'm not a great scholar. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what I would feel might be true. But I'm sure you could talk to others who, who could tell you more specifically what, what was happening. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because the P Pilgrims, the Plymouth community was so small that you had to, there was a certain order that had to be maintained, I guess, in order for it to be sustained. And uh, every so often at the plantation there'll be uh, replications of court cases. And one of the instances that I saw was a, an instance where somebody was being brought up for drunkenness or, um, or uh, being up beyond the curfew. So the, 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 the role of the um, society was fairly tightly constricted. And I think that they saw what they perceived, perceived to be licentiousness. Um, they probably saw it as a threat to the fabric of this very small society, which was struggling 
to cope with the difficult winters. You know, they, uh, at, at the period the plantation represents, they've survived several years. Of course, that first winter, half of them had died. Mm -hmm. So it, it was a real struggle for survival. And I think that uh, perhaps um, uh, this had a lot to do with the concern about what they saw as invasions of that fabric. Yeah. I'm sure that it made you angry that uh, Thomas Morton referred to you as Captain Shrimp so. and that also he uh, aggravated you in a lot of ways. I would like to know how you felt about that and whether there was perhaps any affinity between the two of you as two men of action in your age. Certainly not. I'm known to be a man of choleric nature. I'm very quick to anger, yet I've learned to govern my humor. And uh, such as Morton, he is a gentleman. Now, uh, God has set a certain order amongst men. Uh, he has ordained some men to be farmers, some men to be beggars, and indeed some of the men to be kings and gentlemen. Now, God has set us in our position that we may serve God in that capacity. This man Morton, being a gentleman, I do not think sets a very good example for those uh, what are beneath him in station. And I do not at all think he is a man of good carriage. I think he, well, being a lawyer, this is the... Uh, being a better uh, uh -huh. is uh, not thought to be something of very good repute at all. Or, or events that, not necessarily for propaganda reasons, but events tend to get collapsed, as you said. Yes, into, he's encapsulating a whole bunch of yeah. stuff, as if Morton was the origin of gun running in New England. Mm -hmm. But the, uh, the French were doing it, the English fishermen on the coast of Maine were doing it. Yeah. So, you know, it was very common. Then by 1643, the Dutch were arming Indians on the Hudson Valley, mm -hmm. and always the impetus was the benefits of fur trade, mm -hmm. which were financing almost all of these colonies to a large extent. New Netherlands was being financed basically on fur trade. Mm -hmm. New France, fur trade. Plymouth and, and Massachusetts Bay and the other New England colonies, slightly different. They did trade with natives, but also they were plantations and plantations first, not trading posts. They were here to stay at work yes. and not just be at Bringing their families with them. Yeah. That was the first thing. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, it just, you know, goes to the English economy at the time. Mm -hmm. You know, people being forced off the land as the land is being used to pasture sheep for the wool industry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Things like that. So, uh, you know, looking at the larger picture, uh, yeah, you can say, so what to Martin? Uh, so what that he sold guns to the Indians? To native people, if you have a commodity that's yours and you want to trade it for something else, no one can tell you no. Usually you would not trade with your enemies. That was about the only kind of stricture against that or people that you're in hostility against. Mm -hmm. But even in times of peace, hostile forces not only traded with one another but intermarried with one another. We have many cases of Wampanoags and Narragansetts intermarrying during the times of peace. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, Plymouth Colony is looking at it strictly from their own viewpoint. And since Plymouth Colony is generally used as the example of uh, English behavior, then naturally most people pay attention to them. Mm -hmm. And they think of them as being right and honest and, and uh, fair, and that Morton was a libertine and, you know, irresponsible and uh, was creating a hazard for everybody else. Common pleasure with common folk. And we have a common folk, and uh, we did happen upon Mary Mount, and the, and the fellow which is not over again, who should be brought to justice. The man of fashion may dance around the maple every May. There's simply nothing wrong with it. The fellow was a good, good strapping fellow with a, with a good dose of wit. What about his selling guns to the Indians, though? Does that make you nervous? Men must pursue the trades wherever they may find them. It is so difficult in this wilderness, sir, I tell you. In this wilderness, so difficult to find a profession that will be profitable and can keep a man alive for more than one year. Think of all the hardships, think of the climate, think of the weather. Well, why, are the neighbor, why are some of his neighbors so nervous that he's selling guns to the Indians? Yes, sir, they are but cropping and puritans. They are but feeble people, not destined for the life they are separatists. Of they are separatists who would break from the Church of England, the true church, and speak ill of their king, who is a godly anointed well, king. Here, 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 here. But is Morton's behavior with Indian women and the Maypole, is that proper Christian behavior? Oh, indeed, sir. It has been such for hundreds of years. Uh, these folk who would say, say the nay of it uh, are but aberrations uh, upon the face of the earth, and they know not of what they speak. Nevertheless, they couldn't just shoot Morton. He was still too well connected with Gorthes and King Charles. So Plymouth marooned him on the Isle of Shoals off New Hampshire. There, with only the suit on his back, Morton got food and liquid comforts from the Indians until a fishing boat did take him on to England. 
Once home, the charges against him collapsed, and within a year, he was right back in the Pilgrims' faces. They were amazed and complained against Morton, but he only walked out into the wilderness again, saying they were willful people who would never be answered.